Hi, everybody. I'm Chuck, and this is my good friend Mark from Oklahoma City. And today we're kind of talking what what would be a good thing to talk about. And we came to the conclusion that what happened after the resurrection was pretty important. We just celebrated Easter. So let's talk about what happened after the resurrection. And we're going to read some scriptures, Acts chapter 1, and then uh, Mark and I are going to discuss this. So Mark, if you would start reading. So beginning in verse 1, the first account I composed, Theophilus, about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after he had by the Holy Spirit given orders to the apostles whom he had chosen. To these he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over a period of 40 days and speaking of the things concerning Speaking of the things concerning the kingdom of God, gathering them together, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised, which he said, you heard from me for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they were asking him, saying, Lord, is it at this time you are restoring the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know times or epochs which the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and even to the remotest part of the earth. And after he had said these things, he was lifted up while they were looking on, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And as they were gazing intently into the sky while he was going, behold, two men in white clothing stood beside them. They also said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? This Jesus who has been taken up from, from you into heaven will come in just the same way as you have watched him go into heaven. Awesome. So a lot of information, a lot of things going on. But Mark, what stands out to you? about the events after the resurrection. Yeah, I this is one of my favorite parts of the New Testament right here uh, for, for several reasons, but um, just even going back to verse one. So we read there in the beginning of the book of Acts and the guy who wrote this book is Luke, the same guy who wrote the gospel of Luke. And it's almost like a part two of the gospel of Luke. Hmm. He goes on and he says, the things that I wrote to you and now I'm going to write some more about what Jesus began to do and teach in Luke. Now it's almost as though he's saying, now I'm going to tell you about what the church begins to do and teach. Mm -hmm. And so it's so key that we don't just stop with the resurrection because this good news, this gospel is not just about the change of state or what happens to us as believers, but it now means that we're given a job to do. And so we see the writer, Luke, he's setting it up for, okay, now the church, Jesus is passing the baton and even commissioning them to go to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the ends of the earth, that it's time for you to do and to teach now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so this is the grand passing of the baton, like you said, you know, and uh, I, I thought it was interesting as well that Jesus spends 40 days teaching them about the kingdom of God. And he had spent a lot of time talking about the kingdom of God before his death, burial, and resurrection. And now he's kind of keeps emphasizing this kingdom, which is nothing like any kind of earthly kingdom. And uh, what he said to Pilate, you know, my kingdom is not of this earth. And uh, now we're starting to see a glimpse of how mighty, how glorious, how majestic is our king, you know? So 
you mentioned that Acts 1.8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Now, this particular event is much anticipated, and Jesus says this all the way back when John the Baptist was preaching. He promised that Jesus would baptize with fire, with the Holy Spirit. Tell us a little bit about this very significant event. Yeah, that's a big question. Uh, the, the, the short answer that, I, that comes off of my heart today, just out of the overflow of my heart, is the beauty of it. So we're talking about why we need to talk about this post-Easter and the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus it's so significant because it means that the father has cleansed us and he's, he's changed us in the sight of God. Um, he saved us. But more than that, he now is not just cleansed us on the inside, but he's put his Holy Spirit in us and on us for the mission itself. And so this is just so exciting because it means that he's saying here uh, that the things that you saw me doing when you were with me, I'm now I'm I'm empowering you to go forth to be my witnesses, mm. um, and so it's it's powerful because it means that the good news is not just for us, but it's for us to be witnesses and share with others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we are not alone when we share this good news. <laughs> I was talking to an older saint the other day. He said, when I shared the gospel, my knees still shake. And I was like, amen, brother. I, I can identify with you. But the, the king is with us in the presence of the Holy Spirit that resides within us. And, uh, you know, we see that in Acts chapter 2. And, you know, not to get too far ahead of ourselves, but when they ask, what should we do? Peter says, uh, repent, be baptized, and receive the Holy Spirit. And this promise is not only for you, but for you and your children and those far away. And so that's the Judea, Samaria, uh, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. So we have power to share this good news. No. Uh, what else? Any, any uh, concluding thoughts? Uh, I just love that you brought this up today because I think uh, Easter, uh, and we, we talk about Christmas a lot, and I think maybe the world has made Christmas this really big holiday, and it, it should be celebrated because it is the birth of Jesus, but Easter is really the, the peak, the pinnacle uh, of the Christian calendar, and so we've got to talk about Easter, but this just helps to unpack for maybe those who haven't processed this before or those who have for a long time that it's not just about the death, burial, resurrection, which is a huge deal, yeah. but this has got mm -hmm. a point to, and then Jesus calls us to get in the game and be a part of doing the same work with others. Yeah, that's right. And, and now we answered the question, so what about you? You know, what about me? How do I fit into this grand scheme of things that God has, uh, I call it the greatest enterprise in history, human history, is that we're gonna advance God's kingdom. And so uh, if, if that doesn't thrill you, go back and read the, the Gospels and the Book of Acts, and uh, align your heart with God. If you're watching and they're like, eh, go back and read it, you know, and and just try to align your heart with God's heart, because He loves you, and He loves people, and He wants to see them in a right relationship with Himself, and so. The, to me, this is, this is what I give my life to, this good news. Jesus loves you. 
he died for you. He was buried and rose again. And then he gave us this commission. Go to all the nations and proclaim the good news. So thanks, Mark. I appreciate you helping me. And uh, we are looking forward to getting back with you next time. We love you. God bless you. And until next time, keep following Jesus.